and welcome to Chair Interval Training, brought to you safely in your home by Community Access Yellow Springs, the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and me, Lynn Hardman. I'm a Silver Sneakers instructor certified through American Council on Exercise, and this is a flex class. But you don't need to have silver sneakers, nor do you need to be a member of the Senior Center. We would love for you to do that. January is the best month of the year to join because it's a calendar-based membership. And um, you don't need any of that. You just need a sturdy chair today if you have it, a rubber ball and some hand weights or a jug filled to, with the desired amount of liquid for our strength work. This is chair interval training. It's approximately 60 minutes of intervals where we do stand up, sit down, wherever you're at, on your feet or in your seat, cardio work. And we combine that and alternate it with strength work. So um, make sure you've got a clear, safe, nothing under your feet to slip, trip, or fall on area. Well lit, some sturdy shoes on your feet, great attitude in your mind today. And consult your physician before you do this or any exercise program. If you feel dizzy or out of balance or out of breath at any time, or something's giving you a sharp shooting, sudden pain, it's recommended that you stop, slow down, remain or return in your chair. So let's get started. Uh, oh, and before we do, I wanted to catch your attention to my Antioch red cloth mask and t-shirt because I miss being able to teach at the Wellness Center at Antioch College. And before this show airs, there'll be a couple of things happening um, here in Yellow Springs that are notable. One is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We have a notable celebration, um, and, and this year will probably be a little different. And then the other thing is that John Lithgow, is who, who calls Yellow Springs his hometown, is doing a benefit concert, a virtual one, and it is to help fund an Antioch College full tuition program and Antioch Works, which also gives employment to Antioch College students. So, more on that later, but let's get started. I've got a little bit of music. We've got our weight to be lifting and a rubber ball, tuck those away. You can do this in your chair or you can do it on your feet. Whatever you want, do it your way, go at your own pace. And again, if anything hurts, tone it down or just stop and you can rejoin when you're ready. Let's see what we got today. You can just march in your chair or in the air, nice and slow. You could keep going at this pace, or you could do it a little bit faster at tempo. Swing in your arms to this swing music in cross crawl fashion if you like, whether you're going slow or tempo. That helps connect the brain to the body when we use those opposite arm with the leg movement. Ah, it also is good to use your best posture, whether you're seated or standing, by trying to keep your ears stacked directly over your shoulders, over your hips, and if you're seated or standing, knees over ankles, please. This will make it easier to move and easier to breathe. So we could try that, just breathing in, just at your own pace, ideally through your nose, but if you're stopped up, mouth breathing will also work. And just see how it feels and explore your full, safe, comfortable range of motion. If one arm likes to go a little higher than the other, that's fine. Listen to your body. I want to warm you up. Just get that heart rate going a little bit faster, but I need you to work with me. I'm counting on you to listen to your body. Use your best posture and at all times stay 
close enough to your chair that you can see it with your peripheral vision and touch it. It's our balance check. It's our home base. All right, I'm gonna preview a couple patterns we'll use. We always work on the ABCs, agility, balance, and coordination while we do some aerobic or heart and lung training, as well as all of those major muscles in our bodies too. So, we're gonna do a little pattern for agility and balance that sounds like this. It sounds like lift, two, three, march, two, three. And it looks like this, march, two, three, lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift. You got your chair there, because while we're lifting that knee three times, we're balancing on one foot, but we can also tap that toe down. We can grab the chair or tap our toe down whenever we need. We can do this pattern at this tempo and later on if you choose if it's within your skill set and your comfort zone we could try to do it double time so think about that little tiny movements here we go lift two three march two three lift two three march two three lift two three lift two three march two three lift two three one two three lift two three march two three get it if not, we'll practice that again later. So that's one of the patterns we'll use. The other pattern is, I'm gonna call it rock around the clock. You're gonna have your left foot nearest the chair and you're gonna take your right foot and describe an analog clock by stepping on each one of the numbers, starting up at the top on 12 and then coming around till six and then back. So just march it out on your right foot, right 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 step on 12 and then back together good and then on one and then on two and together and then on three four five when we get to six we're going to come back around and rock back around the clock four three two one and we could do this at tempo and we might choose to do it faster. Let's see what that would look like. Let's come rock around the clock a little faster. Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> so we might choose to do it even slower and work a little bit on balance and strength. We might step on 12 and then lift instead of rocking. One and lift. And we could step around the clock. So those are some patterns, but we just wanted to get our blood moving, circulation going, limber up those feet and knees and hips. And speaking of hips, we're gonna shift our focus to seated and continue to warm up there. But as we do, come to the front of your chair and tap your feet literally on your chair Oops, I think I went ahead on the music accidentally. So, with your legs and your feet touching the chair, as you hand your hips back to sit down or do a little tiny mini squat, you know that the chair is going to be close enough should you lose your balance. We don't want you to go splat on the floor. We want you to sit down nice and safe. Best posture at the front edge of your seat. I got this thing tickling my cheek. <laughs> Sitting tall, shoulders up, back, down, and then smooth it around. You can keep your hands right there on your shoulder joints, soothing them. Or you could just bring it out to your elbows or all the way through your arms. And think of breathing in as your arms go up and out as they come down. All right, great. Sitting tall at the front of your seat. Let's see if we can do that pattern that I showed you in our chair. Just to further warm up and prove to ourselves that we can do it. We can accomplish a healthy exercise program whether we're seated or standing. So let's try the lift two, three pattern here. Lift two, three, 
three, march, two, three, lift. Yeah, that works. How about faster? Lift, two, three, one, two, three, lift, two, three, one, two, three, lift, two, three, one, two, three, lift. Yes, that works. Good. What about the other pattern? Rocking around the clock. Walk on 12, walk on one, two, three. Kind of have to be careful when you get back towards five and six. And let's see if it would work faster. Yes, of course it does. I just wanted to prove it to myself and to you. All right, let's stretch out our legs, right and left, sitting tall, hands at your waist. Brace with your belly, as if someone's gonna bump you in the stomach, but they're not. Holding the, the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. See how it feels to stretch your leg in the air. And pull that navel in. Work on those opposites again. Stretching the opposite arm to the outstretched leg. If it hurts your lower back, breathe and brace with those abdominals. They're supporting your back. Or just put your heel on the ground. Good, we're gonna do just a couple more. Now, just keep that right leg up and point and flex. Point and flex a little faster. Good, put it down and let's do the same with the left. Opposite arm, point and flex. Feel those quadriceps, long thigh muscles a little faster. Point, flex, point, flex. Ooh, I felt that there. Okay, let's put our hands on our lap and bounce those heels on the floor. Bounce the heels of your hands. our heels and elbows out and in. Got to get those ankles and hips and shoulders and wrists warmed up. They're very important. Let's try some wrist circles. One way and then the other. I think I must have. I gotta check my music while we do. Stretch out that right leg. Well, that's odd. Reaching forward. Stretch a little. Toes up in the air, fingers too. Ah, and then push the sole down, fingers too. Sit tall, pull the, na the navel in and the knee towards the chest and circle that ankle. I guess we're okay with the music. And then the other direction. Woo, okay, let's stretch out that left leg. Sitting tall, again, support on the lap. As you hinge forward, keep the back long and strong. Dorsiflex the toes and the fingers up towards the ceiling. Ooh, feel a good gentle stretch in the hamstring. Ah, and then push the sole of the foot down towards the floor to stretch the front of the ankle. And fingers down. Good. Sit tall. Hold the navel in as if you're zipping up tight pants. Draw that knee towards the chest as you lean back, circling with the ankle one way and then the other. Okay, I feel a little bit readier to, <laughs> a little bit more ready to exercise. If you use a scale from one being the lowest intensity and 10 being the highest, how are you feeling now? Maybe a one to a three? That's good. We're gonna shoot for a slightly higher target zone of a four to a seven or an eight while we do the bulk of our exercise now that we're good and warmed up. The warm up, by the way, and the cool down are the most important parts of our exercise, so don't skip that. You can always just join in late and go slow, okay? But we're gonna do our rock around the clock pattern first. So decide whether you wanna be on your feet or in your seat. Dig your heels in, squeeze your hips forward. If you feel dizzy, come right back down to your chair. If you're feeling fine, saddle up side to side with your chair. It's your dance partner for this pattern. 
Best posture, whether you're seated or standing. Get that right foot marching. Good. Now imagine an analog clock on the floor. And we're going to use our right foot to step from 12 down, uh, all the way up to 6 or down behind this. And then we'll do it faster. Let's start out at this tempo. Ready? Step on 12 and then rock back. We're going to rock in 1, rock it around the clock. And 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, rock back around to five. You can swing those arms if you don't need to hold the chair. Good. Two, one. Let's try it a little faster. Twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six. Back around. Five, four, three, two, one. Twelve. Woo. How'd that feel? We're running through this several times, so let's do it with the other leg and bring ourselves over to the left side of the chair so we've got our right hand to steady ourselves if we need it and get that left foot marching. Best posture. Ready to rock around the clock? I hope so. Let's step on 12 with that left foot together. Now we're going down. 10. Count with me. 9. Eight, seven, six, back up to seven, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. It's almost time to go faster if you want to. Faster. Eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Did you get it? We do want you to be able to say a few words while exercising. And it's a good brain game to describe the numbers forward and backward in a different order. So let's try it again. If you want, you can count along with me. If you start to get out of breath, just stop counting out loud. And then if you start to get out of breath, even though you're not counting, you can just take it slower. Let's come on to the right side. Best posture. Right foot marching. Right, right, ready to rock around the clock. Step on 12. One, two, you know the drill now. Three, four, five, six, back to five, four, three, Two, when we get to 12, we're going to go fast. Here we go. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 12 again. How are you doing? Ready to try the left side again? We're moving along. Come on over. How's your, uh, if you have to assess your exertion level? One to ten. Hopefully you're at a four to seven. I know that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> Best posture. Right hand, able to see and touch the chair. And get that left foot marching, marching. Good. We're going to rock back around the clock. Ready? Step on twelve. Twelve. Eleven. Ten. Nine. Eight. Swinging those arms if you like. Seven. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. When we get to 12, we're going to double time. 10. 11. Here we go. 12. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 8. <laughs> 9. I go. 10. 11. 12. <laughs> I told you it's a good brain training to say it out loud. It's also good to laugh at ourselves. All right, how you doing? Able to talk still? Feeling like you could do more? We're gonna try it slow one time and then fast. Okay, so we're gonna skip the tempo. We're gonna go slow and then fast. So 12 and 
together. Good. One and together. Sink a little lower. Two and together. If you can. Three and together. Good. Four and together. When we get to six, we're going to go fast. So sink down into six. And then we're going to come back around fast. Five, three, or three, two, one. Well, let's go back around. Three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one, twelve. Good. Don't worry if that if it felt like a hot mess. Obviously, I demonstrated a couple of ways we could do that, but. We're just ch experimenting with changing our speed. So come on over to the left. This will be the last time we do this. Best posture, right hand able to touch the chair. Keep it in your peripheral visual path. Field. And we're gonna do this nice and slow. Step on 12, down, sink into it, and together. Step on 11, and together, good. This is our rock around the clock or step out drill. Nine. Excellent. Eight. Once we step down into six, we'll come back around the clock fast. Not yet. Ready? And let's rock around the clock. Here we go. Six and seven and eight and nine, ten, eleven. Want to do it again? Come on. Nine. Eight, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Woo! That was a lot of rocking around the clock. Hopefully you got your heart rate up. Hopefully you're able to imagine that analog clock and organize your feet. Get some coordination going. If you're on your feet still, walk your left foot back. And let's get a little bit of a slowing down of our heart rate while we stretch those calf muscles. Pasting our heel on the ground and leaning forward. Because when we make those fast footwork patterns, our calves have to really tighten up and we take a little bit of time to re-lengthen them, we'll feel better. Walk the other foot back. Paste that heel on the ground. Lean forward. Excellent, relax. Come on out of that. And we're going to come to the front of our chair, transition to our um, first interval of strength. One of your best strength exercises that's so important for functional fitness is a squat. So make sure your heels are touching the chair. This gives us a nice footprint for a wide hip width almost. A little more, a little less. You can put your feet just on the outsides of the chair if you have a thin base, and if that feels better. Or just on the inside of the chair legs. Do your best. Keep your abdominals engaged and breathe as you hinge your hips back. Keep your weight equal in your right and your left feet. And relax into your seat. Woo! I need a drink of water. I forgot to tell you at the top of the hour, we always have some drinking water on hand. And when we're getting things down low, step to the side, lean to the side. Use those abdominal muscles to protect the spine by bracing and your arm. Having a system and taking your time and being mindful is so important for reducing our risk of injuries. Here's to that. We're going to do some exercises with our weights. And there is an option to stand up in a lunge with this set of exercises. It's a very challenging option, however, so I wanted to let you know that. Go ahead and grab your jug or your hand weights. If you don't have any weights, your body weight and just moving mindfully through this series will make you stronger. We're going to sit sort of split stance or side saddle in our chair. 
keep the back long and strong by bracing. You can have your left hand on your lap, and we're gonna hinge forward, reach for those left toes with the right arm, and roll. Simple. Strengthening the upper back, rear shoulder, and the bicep. Now, dig your heel on that front leg into the floor and ball the foot on the rear leg and see how it feels to pretend to get up. If it doesn't feel good, then it, it's not right for you. If it feels fine, you're gonna add your up-down body lunge. Go at your own pace. Slower is actually good with strength work. Adding a little power with control is also a good option. But you know you. Work to the best of your abilities. And we've done quite a few repetitions, so I'm gonna do one more at my best, and then sit down and give those muscles a rest. If you sit square in the chair near the front edge of the seat, feet together, we'll work on some other muscles while those, those ones rest. Brace with your abdominals, hold that weight close to your body. You could hug it like a teddy bear. If your hands can wrap around the handle, to both of them, you'll need that. I'm gonna hug mine today, cradling it at the bottom. Keep it close to your chest, tuck your tailbone in and lean back for an abdominal exercise. Then sit up, but not to the point where you're not using or feeling that work down in the lower part of the abdomen. Keep the brace as if someone's gonna hit you in the belly the whole time and breathe. The tendency is to hold our breath. We're gonna add a little option here of pushing up to the right and to the left. We're gonna describe a lowercase v letter. And if that feels good, keeping that brace on your abdomen, you can make it a uppercase V letter, adding our shoulder and chest press to this movement. And it's a pretty big whole body movement. So as we did before, do your best and then take a rest. All right, so we worked our chest, fronts of the shoulders and triceps, and as well as our core with that. We're gonna finish off sitting side saddle to the left of our chair, just as we did on the right. We're gonna use our left arm. Right arm will brace on the right leg. See if you can work that left leg back and tuck the toe under. So if you wanted to add a lunge, you may. But first, get your posture right. Long, strong torso. Brace with the abdominals and the arm. Hinge slightly forward and reach for the toes. Row. So think of squeezing your shoulder blades together behind you at the top of this one-armed row. And then if you like, you have the option of digging your feet into the floor and see how that feels. See if you think it's gonna work for you to get up from this position. And if it does, Go ahead and add your lunge. You can sit down whenever you like. Do your best. Keep that abdominal bracing, the abdominal muscles, and breathe. Maybe just a couple more. This is a big movement. Good. All right. Let's do one more set of abdominal slides. And if you want, you can add that V. So cradle that weight close to your chest. Sit near the front edge of your chair. Tuck your tailbone under, lean back. And slide forward. If you want, you can add those V presses. If you don't want, you don't have to. a big all-body exercise if you're using a good amount of weight so we're just gonna do a few more and then we're gonna move on to our next aerobic interval aerobic means with oxygen but before we do let's get some water 
and step to the side. Lean to the side, brace with your abdominals and your arms. Put that weight back down. One of the leading causes of dizziness and headaches is dehydration, at at, especially in this very cold weather. So keep water handy in a, in a clear container that you can see your progress throughout the day. That's one good way to do it. All right, we're gonna use that lift two, three, march two, three pattern. In your chair or on in the air, it's your choice whether you're gonna remain in your seat or be on your feet. I know you can do it. We, we already practiced that when we were warming up. So if you're gonna be on your feet, dig those heels in. And if it's not working, sit right back down. Remember, your chair is, is your assistive device. And there's no shame in using assistive devices like a cane or a walker or eyeglasses or hearing aids. The real shame is not using it properly when it's needed. So we can make the most of our lives. All right, so exercise is a very assistive device. So whether you're in your chair or standing, sidle up to the right. We're gonna do our lift Here's what it sounds like. Lift, two, three, march, two, three. Here's what it looks like. For balance, lift, two, three. Pull up through your body, engage your core or brace. Breathe. You've got your chair if you need it within your reach. Just one finger on that assistive device really adds to your balance. And just knowing it's there adds to your confidence and that's important. Now, you can also tap your toe down if you need when we're doing that lift because we're balancing on one leg for a few seconds. Yeah. Try not to lean to the side. All right, good. We can do this at tempo, and you know you, so you can stick with it. You don't have to go double time. But after this one, if you want, we're gonna do it faster. Here we go. Lift, two, three, one, two, three, lift, two, three, one, two, three, lift, two, three, one, two, three, lift. Ha! That's hard. Do a couple more. It's hard for me. Just relax, march it out, take a deep breath, adjust your posture, and give yourself a number from one to 10 of how you feel. One being, I could do that all day, no problem. And 10 being, I gotta stop right now. Remember, we're shooting for a target zone of four to seven or eight. Eight means I, I can't sustain this, I'm gonna have to slow down. Let's try this behind our chair. Nice wide stance. And just try it with a little mini squat. Wait a minute, let me think about this. Lift, two, three, we're gonna kick our butt with a little hamstring curl. March, two, three, lift, two, three. Keep your torso tall. If it feels good, you can row with one arm or both while you're doing those hamstring curls. Opening the chest is good. Add a little dip to your skip there. Flexing down into that support leg. Knowing you've got your chair there the whole time to check your balance. Or you can tap your toe down. We could do this at tempo. One more time, and then if you like, we could try it fast. Are you ready? Lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three, one, two, three, lift, two, three, one, two, three. Hey, who did that? Well, that's a good time to <laughs> change it up. 
Maybe take it over here to the left side of your chair. And we're just going to try a little same pattern lift, two, three, march, two, three. But this time we're going to keep our leg a little long or a little kick, kick, two, three, march, two, three, kick, two, three. Your kick could be a little swingy at the knee or it could be nice and straight. You could try, try it one way. Try it the other way, see what works best for you. Three, march, two, three, lift. Two, three, march, two, three, lift. Two, three, march, two, three. How are you feeling? Are you comfortable at this tempo? You can remain at this tempo, or if you want, we could try it fast. Here we go. Kick, two, three, one, two, three, kick, two, three, one, two, three. I feel like I'm tap dancing. Yikes. Kick, two, three, one, two, three, kick, two, three, one, two, three. How are you doing? Kick, 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 one, two, three, kick, kick, kick. Couple more. Good, march it out. Take a deep breath. Decide if you want to continue. How are you feeling? Say it out loud. I wish I could hear your sweet voice. <laughs> All right, we're going to do it one more time. Behind our chair. Again, this time we're going to use the longer leg. Work those hips if you like. Or you can bend your knee. So lift here we go. Right. Two. Three. March. Two. Three. Left. Pull the navel in. Open those arms if you like. You can keep one hand or both on the chair the whole time. But dorsiflex your foot and use the side muscles of your strong, powerful hips. They're very important for your balance. Now this is going to get tiresome faster than the other moves because our leg is long and we're working with a longer lever doing a little more strength work. So how about one more time at tempo? And if you like, you don't have to, we'll try it double time. Here we go. Lift, two, three, one, two, three, lift, two, three. Just hold it out there. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, I need my balance check there. How are you doing? March two, three, lift, two, three, march two, three. Yeah, oh, I can feel that in my hips. How about you? This would be a good time to give them a little stretch, bring our heart rate back down. <sighs> Put your weight in your right leg. Push into that right hip if it feels good. Maybe stretch to the right side. Ah, we could take it over here to the left and do the same. It's just easier on this side to use our chair. And it's good to have the right tools and it's good to use the right tools at the right time. So pushing into that left hip, stretching. A little note, which I'm sure you know, if it hurts your shoulder when you extend the arm overhead or at any angle, shorten that lever, smooth it by shortening. It takes a load off of the joint. All right, we have a couple more moments to just breathe and let that good blood flow through our body and up to our brain. This is why aerobic activity is so important for you. We're going to, and if you're in your chair, just imagine or do it with your arms. But we're gonna just take a little stroll around our chair, nice and slow. Now, we're describing the number or the imaginary number, zero. Let's try a figure eight. So just a little bit here over your shoulder. And then a little bit here. You can always keep one hand on that chair the whole time. Good. Figure eight walking is one excellent brain game that maybe we could talk about in future weeks. 
I learned it at a PTO meeting at Mills Lawn from an educator named Ann Anzalone. Anyway, we're gonna work on strength. And get your feet to touching your chair legs, get your hips back, keep your head and your chest up. Imagine balancing a glass of water on each shoulder. Don't let your knees knock together. Do your best to keep the head up as you reach the hips back and get seated whenever you're ready. Good time to have another sip of water. Be mindful. Take your time. Step to the side. Engage your core. And step to the side. We're going to use our ball. Do some more abdominal strengthening as well as some upper back, shoulder, and low back hip strengtheners. So go ahead and grab your ball. Sit at the edge of your chair, walk your feet out. We're gonna do some side lateral flexion. So left hand on your waist, right hand just sitting at the side. See how it feels, tilt a little ways. Not bending forward, simply moving to the side. Imagine a sheet in front of your body. Let's place that ball under the right arm, if you like, and add to that side lateral flexion for your waist, the obliques. Pull in at the navel, and we're squeezing with our shoulder and upper back, strengthening that. Exhale as you squeeze when you're squeezing the air out of the ball. Gotta breathe during this nearly isometric exercise. Good. Awesome. All right. Well, let's do the other side. Bring that ball around. You can hold the palms facing each other or palm up like you've got a glass of water or a tray there and tilt to the side. Remember to breathe. Start with a small range of motion. Make sure it's feeling good and then you can make it a little bit bigger. But what's most important is that you brace and think about how you're strengthening your core, keeping your spine flexible and strengthening your shoulders and upper back with this exercise. Exhale each time. Pull that navel in. Do your best. Maybe two more on this. Strengthen the obliques and the shoulder stabilizers. Good, all right. Walk those feet together. Sit tall, brace. Check that abdominal engagement with your ball. Now keep it close to your heart. Tighten up your, your uh, hips as well. Dig your heels into the floor and start with the tip of your head. Imagine that you're a giant crayon. You can be whatever color you want. And draw circles on the ceiling with your head. Pull the navel in. Good. If you want, you can bring that ball up and draw circles a little higher. Slow. You can make that circle bigger. Keep your feet firmly planted on the ground as you circle in the air. Pull the navel in. And you know we've got to go the other way, right? But let's take a break first and work on some sitting just tall and grip strength exercises. Holding the ball, palms. Uh, fingers spread out wide, wrists straight, just squeeze. You can squeeze the four fingers toward the heel of the hand and leave the thumb out of the equation if your thumb aches, or you can squeeze with all digits. Good, all right, squeeze faster, squeeze, 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 and breathe in as if you're smelling your favorite meal. Exhale, as if you're blowing your cooler down. Excellent. All right, we're gonna draw those circles. Hopefully you remember which way you went. Pull the navel in. The 
first time I did this, I went counterclockwise. I'm going clockwise. I should have given you a hint. And if it feels good, nice and slow, pulling that navel in, you can make your circle bigger. All right, we are working on the abdomen, and you should feel it there, especially at the back side of your circle. Excellent. Well, the complementary muscles are the lower back and the gluteals. So we're going to do one last exercise with our ball, putting it back behind you, right in the, the little curve of the small of your back, and scooch back and get some resistance there. Dig your heels into the floor, close to your chair legs. Hold on to your seat. See how it feels to tighten up your tushy. Push into that ball. Also tighten up in your abdominals and do some hyper extensions. If you want, you hold on your seat, but you can put your hands across your chest. Just make sure all four of them your legs and your music device <laughs> stay on the ground. Did you hear that? <laughs> okay, so really engage your core. Dig your heels in and feel it in your gluteals. It's a small movement. Exhale as you squeeze the air out of the ball, strengthening the hips and the lower back. That's how we do our heavy lifting. Awesome. Maybe two more. I hope it feels awesome. I always feel better after I move my body gently with a good warm up and a good cool down. So let's do just that. You can tuck that ball away. Get a sip of water if you like. Remember, brace, breathe, brace, and flex to the side. It's much easier on the lower back than bending forward. Okay, we've got a little bit more time to work on balance. I'm going to show you seated if standing is not how you're feeling or up to at this moment. But we're going to use our right hand and we're going to imagine grabbing something out of our pocket or our sheath and then holding it up to the upper right. So turn your cage a bit and follow your hand with your eyes. We could do that standing and since we're moving our head it will make the balance harder. Remember for a better, more stable base, wider stance. If you want to make it more challenging, narrower stance. If you want to make it more challenging, kick stand or up on the ball with one foot. If you want to balance on one foot, you know you. You can stay in your chair or we could try that again, standing. Very carefully get yourself over to the right side of your chair, able to see with your peripheral vision and touch with your left hand. You can start with a wide base and see how it feels. Turning your ribs a little to reach into your left pocket. Unsheath your sword or your pen. Pen is mightier than the sword. Breathe. If that was easy, make your stance narrower and continue. Slow. If that's still easy, pull up to your kickstand on that right foot, balancing mostly on your left foot. If that was easy, lift that foot up. Moving our head makes the balance more challenging because we are sending a little bit of a mixed message to our inner ear and our eyes. And those are two big parts of the balance input to our brain. Another one is proprioception. And we have little cells especially in our joints, especially in our ankles, that help us with balance. So we're teaching our body and our mind to work together better when we do this. Standing over on the left, now your right hand can see, and eyes can see the chair. Left hand can touch it, right hand. Oh, you just start with a hip width base, 
And this time we're going to reach with our left hand into our right hip pocket, unsheath, or maybe, maybe you're the Statue of Liberty and you're holding up your torch. But follow or track the left hand with your eyes and a gentle, slow rib cage rotation and gentle rotation through your neck. Reduce the range of motion. And if it's comfortable and you are not challenged, you can put your feet together in the narrow stance. If you want more challenge, you can pull up to the ball of that left foot and try it in this kickstand position. And of course, most challenging would be on one foot. That's hard. So take your time and practice. When we practice, we always want to set ourselves up for success using the assistive device of a sturdy chair or a wall to do this. Um, that just makes sense. The exercises that we choose to do should be number one, and most importantly, ones that feel right for you. Number two, they should always, the benefits of those exercises should always outweigh the risks. So, I mentioned footwear at the top of the area. We're gonna get our feet close to our chair and sit down however you choose. All the squatting is off the table. <laughs> um, but do remember that good foot, good footwear, shoes that are made for the activity that you're choosing are very important to our success and for lowering our rate of injury. Apparently this pandemic's had a, a lot of foot injuries. So some of it is because people aren't wearing shoes or they're sliding around in slippers and slippers make our feet and our walking gait a little bit I don't really like the word lazy, but we tend to let our foot drop um, and that can lead to falls. So let's just get a deep breath and stretch some more, okay? Maybe sitting towards the front edge of your chair. Inhale, open, exhale, close, and then lace those fingers together. Tuck your tailbone under. And let's try that again. Inhale, open your fingers wide, pull the wrists back, open into a slight arch with your chest opening breath. Exhale, closing, interlacing fingers into a slight cat like arch. Inhale, up, 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 just as far as feels comfortable to you. And if you like, Climb a rope, reaching and stretching through that right side. Go at your own pace. Feel free to substitute stretches that you prefer or feel good for you today. It is good to have a well-rounded exercise program. So I try to do different things, different times we meet. You can always go back if you're using YouTube to watch these and do your favorite shows whenever you want. <laughs> Let's also stretch our legs as we did at the beginning, supporting and taking a bow. Take a bow, you deserve it, but let that arm drift down, keeping the chin up above the level of your heart, toes up, whether you can reach them or not. Wriggle your tailbone back and the crown of your head up and out. That feels good. Take a moment. Let, let the stretch develop. Let's try that other leg. This is not the song I intended, but it's kind of a nice song. Exhale and stretch. Toes up. Resting that arm down, breathing. Reaching back with the tailbone, lengthening the spine as we breathe in. Exhale. Going at our own pace. 
Good. Let's try a figure four stretch for these hips that worked so hard. Crossing ankle over ankle and letting the outside of the knee drift down toward the floor. Or for more limber hips, ankle on top of the thigh, hinging forward, gently coaxing that outside of the knee down. Take a nice deep breath. Feel the lowest part of your lungs expand into your lap. And let's get the other leg. Take your time. And remember, your left side may not be equally limber as your, as your right or vice versa. So try it ankle to ankle. See how it feels. Here's how it looks, hinging forward, keeping length in the spine from the ankle crossed position of this figure four stretch. Or if your hips are more flexible and it's easy, pain-free to put ankle on top of the thigh. Or again, keeping the spine nice and long. This is when it's least likely to be hurt. And it helps our lungs to expand fully. I should clarify, um, the spine is most able to help your body move in its long, strong position. There's sometimes when it would be safer to curl your spine like if you were falling. We've heard the, um, the expression to uh, stop, drop, and roll if it's a fire, but if you felt that you were going to fall and it was imminent, then your best bet is to get low, tuck your chin, protect your head, and kind of roll to a soft, fleshy part of your body like the upper back, and protect your head rolled up in a, in a small ball getting low. Um, that's if you know you're going to fall. <laughs> Sometimes it's a lot better to go with it than to try not to fall when it's pretty certain you're going down, right? All right, um, I went off on a tangent there, but this is a good time to do nothing. We're going to sort of tune out our mind mindfully Try to think of nothing at all. Bring our attention to our heart center or to our breath or just to the essence of our being. Whatever works best for you, you know you. Practice this relaxation and this breath control. And when I say control, I don't mean holding our breath. I mean just slowing to our our effortless, energizing, inhale, exhale, repeat. I talked a lot about numbers today. If you want to scooch back in your chair, rest your arms in your lap, rest your hands there. You could touch thumb to thumb, finger to finger if you like. One way to, to see and check if you like to measure things, if you like numbers, if you want to measure your breath, you can count silently to yourself and you'll know that your breathing is getting closer to a total relaxed effortless breath when you can breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth at your nice relaxed pace and the exhalation part takes a slightly longer time than the inhalation. Before you do your counting, just lower your gaze or close your eyes. Remind your shoulders to settle down and back. And just breathe in ideally through your nose as if you're smelling your favorite aroma. And exhale through softly, gently pursed lips, like blowing through one of those little coffee straws. 
With each relaxed, effortless inhale, draw that fresh, energizing oxygen to the lowest part of your lungs and let them fill gently, fully from bottom to top. And as you exhale, your lungs will naturally, effortlessly exhale from the top to the bottom. When you like, if you like, you can begin counting slowly to yourself with your inhale. And then with your exhale. either way that when you are relaxing into your effortless meditative breathing you might notice a little pause after a full exhale or some folks notice a natural pause at the top of their inhale and then begin the, the other part of that respiratory cycle. Well, during that pause, don't count. You can notice if it's there, but ideally your in-breath will be um, not quite doubled by your exhale. Some folks that really practice deep mindful meditative breathing do get to a cycle of inhaling to say a four count and exhaling to an eight. But there's no wrong way to do it. Just keep breathing, keep practicing, be mindful, stay hydrated. Um, at the top of the hour, I was talking about Antioch College. Hi, kitty. It's my new cat, 11 year old Warren. She's gotten slimmer since she's been living with me because we have a few little steps and she's got arthritis and she came to live with us for the last chapter of her life. I'm going to take good care of you and she's taking good care of me too. Anyway, I want to talk to you about Antioch College because in our beautiful local small town, guess what? The, 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 the fact that Martin Luther King Jr. Day is tomorrow, you'll see this episode after that, well after that, but you know, we should be thinking about everything that he stood for uh, every day of the year, now more than ever. Anyway, he gave a commencement speech here at Antioch College in 1965. I was a very young child. I remember taking turns with my brother and sister climbing up on our dad's shoulders and um, hearing his, his speech and knowing what an important person he was. And the reason he came and gave a commencement speech at Antioch College is because his wife, Coretta Scott, when she was an Antioch student, was um, uh, is an alumni of Antioch College. So Coretta Scott King um, came to Yellow Springs to study at Antioch College, and while she was here, she was a frequent babysitter for the Lithgow family. And John Lithgow now. Um, of noted fame for Third Rock from the Sun and children's books and acting and movies and on Broadway. He's coming to Antioch College to, to, or he's doing a virtual concert to raise money for the Antioch College Antioch Works program to fund students like maybe Coretta Scott when she maybe couldn't, her family or others may not be able to swing the full tuition this is going to help. And so it just goes to show you, it's a small world and we all are sharing it and we all need to do our best. Wear your masks, social distance, get vaccinated when and if you can 
and talk to your doctor about all this and more. And please keep it safe and simple. Stay strong. Stay connected. See you soon.